What is up, Janksters? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and I want to discuss a card that is emblematic of power creep in some of the most bananas ways possible, and on top of that, was made specifically for me. So I just want to say, everybody at Wizards, I, I see that you clearly got my letters and all my, you know, all my DMs, and I just want to say thank you for making a card specifically for me and every single one of my commander decks that I, I'm sure in no way is going to be frustrating my play groups for the rest of ever. Uh, and that card, by the way, is Breach the Multiverse. Um, I also love when this card got spoiled because you could tell who had been paying attention to the Phyrexia all, uh, all be one storyline and who hasn't because there were a lot of people that were like, oh no, the multiverse is getting breached. And it's like, yeah. That's kind of the entire plot of the current story. But regardless, anyway, Bridge the Multiverse is a really cool card. It is a sorcery for five black black. So this is a mono color, everybody. This is just black. Sorcery. <clears throat> each player mills 10 cards. For each player, choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Then each creature you control becomes a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. This card is absolutely bananas crazy. The effect of taking a creature from your graveyard and putting it on the battlefield has in recent memory been valued at five mana. The ability to mill for 10 cards is usually, uh, you know, uh, well, you don't really see the ability to mill for 10 very often, but the last time we saw it, I believe it was like Thought Distortion, I want to say. It cost two, and it cost two colors. It was black-blue. So we have a situation where if this card said mill yourself for 10 cards, then take a creature from your graveyard and put it on the battlefield, for seven mana, that would actually be perfectly reasonable. But this is so much more than that. It's insane. Because what you're doing is you're milling your opponents, all of them, for 10 cards as well. So in a 1v1 scenario, 7 mana, I mill me for 10, I mill you for 10. I then get to take any creature. It's not from the cards among among the cards milled. So if your opponent has already discarded their Atraxa, sweet, you're set up ready to go. Like, this is insane. Like the amount of value that you're getting for seven mana on this is so high that I truly believe in certain metas, this could be playable even in standard. If the mid-range grind fest continues where the top end threats that are ending games are creatures, all of a sudden this is a very real possibility in certain decks, even in standard. Honestly, I'm gonna try it. You better believe I'm gonna try it. Because for seven mana, I get to almost guarantee I mill my one of my three Atraxas. So I'm gonna be able to grab that. There's a high likelihood my opponent is running Atraxa as well, just because it's a very popular card these days. So that's a thing. But then on top of that, even if they aren't, there's a decent chance they have Shale Dread. Or, I mean, maybe the new Praetors. We've seen Jinja Taxes so far. Those cards are bananas. So it's possible one of those steps up and becomes a player in, uh, you know, in standard. But honestly, even if I reanimate my own Shale Dread and I get your Blood Tithe Harvester, I'm not mad at that. That's still a very powerful effect. And I just milled myself for 10. If I have other cards like Cruelty of Gix or... You know, any like Vat of Emergence, maybe even could be because he's in play. I don't know. Or No One Left Behind, like these other cards that are capable of leveraging my graveyard, or not to mention any number of flashback threats. All of a sudden, like, I've given myself huge card advantage in addition to reanimating something out of nowhere. My opponent could Bajuka Bog my graveyard. I could then, maybe, well, not standard. My opponent could blow up my graveyard in one way or another. I could follow up with this and still hit my reanimation threats a good portion of the time based on how my deck is constructed. I think this card is absolutely insane. Now, that's just talking about 1v1 60 card formats. Can you imagine this thing in Commander? Get out of town. It is gonna play out differently every single time. There's gonna be the one other reanimation player at the table who does not mind getting milled this hard. Um, you know, you're gonna be doing that person a favor. Definitely buddy up with them fast. I would highly recommend. But Milling everybody for 10, you're going to get a ton of feels bads. A lot of people are not going to be happy about that. But that changes the dynamic of the game in a huge way. And then you get the four best cards. Assuming you're in a four-player pod, you're going to get the best card out of every single graveyard in play under your control. That is awesome. If you have another person, like, can you imagine, like, this post-board wipe, 
is amazing because it's like okay everything's cleaned up now i'm just gonna scoop up all the best pieces and put them on my side of the board all right does anybody have another board wipe because i'm necessitating that all of a sudden like <laughs> this thing is bananas it's absolutely incredible it, it, absolutely incredible and it is seven mana right a seven mana sorcery so it's seven mana you can't cast it at instant speed a seven mana sorcery sh it needs to be powerful it absolutely does no question but i feel like this is on a whole other level like we saw emergent ultimatum which was the other card that I feel is a reasonable comparison here. They function inc like wildly differently, but I feel like both of them are gonna have the the um, kind of unspoken text of you win the game. Because with Emergent Ultimatum, if you've built your deck correctly, you grab three things, you put your opponent in kind of this like Faustian deal where they have to just pick how they're gonna die, but no matter what they put back you you get a victory, right? That's the idea. Um, I've beaten an immersion ultimatum going off once maybe tw Maybe twice definitely once when the camera was rolling, but it's not off. I've gotten rolled by it 99% of the time I have a feeling breach the multiverse is a similar level of value now. It doesn't end the game on the spot Necessarily like you have to hit very specific cards out of the graveyard and you would need to be able to leverage your opponent's graveyard as well in a meaningful way, which is not guaranteed. That's, that is, you know, is very meta dependent on whether or not it's going to be good. But I think in a lot of, I mean, in commander games, this makes you the arch enemy immediately. It may not win the game for you on the spot, but it's going to be really meaningful. Oh, I just realized how I want to build this. I want to put this in a deck that has a lot of haste enablers like tuck tuck rubble forts or perforos the bronze blooded so that when i hit this everything so i'm intentionally giving haste to whatever i just took from you so that way i can swing with it i don't know if it's gonna be any good but i'm gonna use it i don't know i think that, that kind of thing could be fun um yeah this card is gonna be fun to resolve not for your opponents at all but for you it's gonna be great that said though milling your opponents for 10 cards could give them a lot of value if they have escape creatures or escape spells all of a sudden you're giving them a lot of fuel to burn those and actually cast some of those if you're giving if they have flashback cards all of a sudden you could be effectively drawing them cards by milling them you know we've reached a point in the game where mill is well it, this has been it's been this way for years to be fair where mill is truly giving your opponents resources in addition to itch, inching them closer to death because obviously when the graveyard runs or when the library runs out that's it but you're getting your opponents closer and closer to that eventual end however you're giving them power in the process because we have so many cards and so many ways to leverage the graveyard. I know in my deck building philosophy, if I'm building a deck and it cannot leverage the graveyard in any way, like, I don't know, it feels weird. Like, I feel like I'm leaving money on the table because the graveyard is a beautiful resource full of all kinds of goodies, and this makes sure that those graveyards are full. So actually, in a way, this is almost, almost kind of a group huggy card because you do get that mill. You do let your opponents get access to some other things, theoretically, assuming their decks can take advantage. I mean, there's gonna be the one player person at the table playing Marin who loves seeing you try to resolve this thing. Because like, yeah, absolutely, take my caustic caterpillar and I'm gonna go ahead and have all the other options available uh, at my disposal. Uh, but anyway, I think this card is wild. If you're playing reanimator and commander, this is a must have. Like, it's really that simple. If you're playing reanimator and commander, you must have this card. I know I'm gonna go out and get as many of these as I can shortly after the drop, cause this thing's a big deal. It's a big deal if you're in that kind of strategy. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Like I, I built a deck actually around Garuda not too long ago because it can steal my opponent's creatures. But even then, I'm casting a six drop and I'm only getting one creature with restrictions. It's only even cost creatures that were milled with the trigger. So it's very limited for six mana to get something similar to this, to get, well, to get one third of the value of this. But this is a, but I guess that also comes with a six, six body. I can blink and things, but all the same. In any event, Breeze the Multiverse is a bananas card. I think this is going to make tons of waves in Commander, especially. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Atraxa continues to be popular in standard specifically maybe in older formats too but definitely standard actually you're going to see this in historic as well now that I, now that i think about it you're definitely going to be seeing this in historic with decks running like croxa and mizix mastery be aware of that that's probably going to be a thing but um yeah definitely commander oh my goodness commander
So yeah, this has been Breach the Multiverse. Cool card. I like it a lot. Obviously, I like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of wild. Uh, it is a slightly cheaper Rise of the Dark Realms with a little less effect, but you kind of get the job done. And actually, if you cast this with seven mana, you mill so many cards, you get some of those cards, but then if you do have a Rise of the Dark Realms, it supercharges that later, which is kind of wild. Or a Living Death. Actually, Living Death after a Breach of the Multiverse could be super interesting. Anyway, I'm, now I'm theory crafting all my new all my new black decks, which, by the way, is most of my decks. <laughs> so I'm excited. So thank you so much for checking out the, this, uh, this video or this podcast. I appreciate it very, very much. I hope you're having a phenomenal day. And I hope to see you across the table. If, just know that if my commander has black in it after this card drops, there's a high likelihood this is in my deck. Be aware <laughs> in any event. Have a phenomenal day, and I'll catch you on the next one.